What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Scripture Saturdays. It's been a minute. If you checked out my video last week, kind of gave an update how I wanted to do something new, kind of switch it up a little bit. So yeah, here we are. So I just thought I don't I'm not really too familiar with Colossians and I really wanted to go through it. So I just wanted to go through it with you guys, not really not preparing anything before. I did look at how to pronounce all the names as I read it. So there is that. And I'll look for some background information so I can understand a little better. But yeah, I just want to learn with you guys. I want to read with you guys. So yeah, I just thought, let's just go through Colossians together. But before that, just quick little recap on the verse of the week, which has kind of been like the verse of the month because I've held it out for so long. But yeah, Proverbs 6, 3, commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. Just a good reminder to give the Lord, trust in the Lord and give him whatever your desires, your plans are. Let him take care of it. Just bring it up to him. But yeah, I'm so excited about this. Let's get to Colossians. So I looked at two commentaries before I started this and got on camera. So one was the Blue Letter Bible. It was in the Blue Letter Bible app. And it was like basically like a commentary and like a brief like background run through by John MacArthur. And then there was a website, insight.org, I believe. So I will leave both of those in the description. And that's kind of what I'm basing this information about to tell you off of. But yeah, so Paul was in prison when he was writing this. And he's in he was in prison in Rome. And he was writing to the church of Colossae. And he actually had never been to Colossae before, interesting enough. But yeah, he was writing to the church of Colossae. And he gets word there's like some heresies going around that it's not that you need more than just Jesus to earn salvation. John MacArthur said like there was some higher knowledge in his commentary that they believed they needed. So that teaching was going around. So yeah, Paul was just writing to kind of dispel that heresy and then also talk about just like the just how great Christ is and like forgiveness and reconciliation and you know just things like that so that was kind of the background information that i found and like i said i'll leave that information in the description so yes yeah, today i was going to focus on colossians 1 1 through 14 so i'll read that real quick paul an apostle of christ jesus by the will of god and timothy our brother to god's holy people in colossae the faithful brothers and sisters in christ grace and peace to you from god our father we always thank god the father of our lord jesus christ when we pray for you because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people, the faith and love that spring up from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who was a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf and who also told us of your love in the spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Lord who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So right away, just kind of want to, at least the things point out to me, Paul pretty much always starts his letters like addressing who he's talking to and like grace and peace to you. Like those, that's pretty, that's pretty typical. At least that's what I always kind of see something like that as far as when Paul opens up his letters. Yeah, going on, a thing that, also, just like how Jesus points out, kind of going down to verse three and like early on, how Jesus tells in Matthew six that, or when he when he shows in the Lord's prayer, when he gives an example how to pray, he thanks the Lord first. So I kind of see that here before he like gets into the nitty gritty of the letter. He always thanks God first, and so I just kind of see that consistency there to start off. And he actually thanks God for the faith of the Colossians and the people of Colossae. And it's very interesting that he starts out kind of like an affirmation. Where, he, yeah, he just starts out like, yeah, like we thank God that you're being so faithful and that you're hearing the gospel and that you're, you're contributing to the spread of the gospel. So it's really cool to see Paul kind of give that affirmation to his church. Because sometimes, at least to me, when I read like kind of Paul's letters, it kind of seems like it's not true. But it seems like sometimes Paul's like always like condemning something in the church and always calling out wrong, which obviously that was a place for her. But it's kind of cool to see like the affirmation that Paul gives the church. But and going down to verse nine, I'll, I find it really interesting and really encouraging to see Paul say, yeah, like we're continuing to pray for you. 
And we're continuing to ask God, and even verse 9 says, we continue to ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way. So I just, I just love how Paul's like just like so invested in in the church. And yeah, keep in mind, Paul's in prison at this point. He's in prison a whole nother, he's in prison all the way in Rome. And Colossae is in some, I'm not, I'm not a big geography guy, but it's somewhere in Asia. I know that I think like in modern day Turkey, I believe. So yeah, he's all the way prison in a whole nother place. And he's still so invested to write this letter, to continue to pray for the church. I'm sure he did it. I'm just, it's not just like when sometimes we can say, oh, we'll pray for you. And then we never do. I'm sure Paul was definitely praying for the church Colossae. So it's very cool to see that Paul is so invested in his church, even in his own struggles. I think we can take that and is and we can still invest in others, need to pour into others, even when our circumstances aren't the best. So I always find that as an encouragement. Yeah, and then going down to verse 11, in Paul's continued with prayer for the church of Colossae, he says, he says, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. And then verse 12, giving joyful thanks to the Lord who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. So they continue to pray that, yes, they live a life holy and pleasing to the Lord, and, and but also that they have the endurance and the strength to get through the trials that come along with that as well. And for a while, I want to make a video on just having joy in tough times. I know that's been a thing I've really learned this year. But yeah, also it's cool to see how Paul like praised that for the church as well. And I'm not really sure of, was this a time where the church Colossae went to persecution or was this a better time? I'm not really too sure about that. But we know for every Christian, that's just a part of life. So it's cool to see Paul pray that. And then to end it off in verse 13, to wrap it back around the Thanksgiving, for he has rescued us from the domain of darkness and brought us to the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. So yeah, again, like I find it cool. It's like wraps back around to it's about Christ and it's about what he's done for us and the Thanksgiving for that. Yeah, that's what I took from the first 14 verses of Colossians. Again, I really want to engage you guys and I want to hear your points. I'm sure I'll learn something. So yeah, feel free to put whatever you took from it in the comments. And yeah, love you guys and I'll see you guys next time.